And so I just feel like we live in a day and time that God is going to promote those who can just keep their heart right. Yeah. Um, in an election year with all kinds of everybody has their opinion and philosophy, there's so much debate and anger. I believe that God is promoting those who can just have pure heart. Hey, everybody, what's up? And welcome to Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Yes. We are so pumped to have you guys be a part of our podcast. And uh, we got a good one for you today. Today, we want to talk to you about the hard work of hard work. Mm. And at the end, you got to stay around for the end because we're going to give you three ways to protect your heart. Today's podcast is going to be everything it's to gonna somebody. It's going to be good. It really is. Yes. And if you're new to our podcast, welcome. We're so excited that you're here with us. You know, we're always praying that God will send people to this podcast podcast that can be blessed by it. So we don't think you're here by an accident. We're so glad that you can join us. And also, if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can be updated on all of our new things. Yeah, you know, our, our podcast is first and foremost a marriage podcast and a relationship podcast, but it is not just that. It is really mm -hmm. a personal growth podcast. So mm -hmm. regardless of your relationship status, whether you are single, ready to mingle, or married, or married with kids. Um, our hope is to help you grow closer to God and closer to the people that God has placed in your life. And we believe today is going to be exactly what somebody needs to hear. We want to talk to you today about the hard work of hard work. Mm. Let me say it again, the hard work of hard work. And I want to start with a scripture, and I want you to just kind of jump in and just tell me what you get out of okay. this. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says, above all else, guard your heart for everything that you do flows from it Ooh. above all else guard mm -hmm. your heart for um for every um above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it what sticks out to you from that Ooh. i think really two things number one is that you have to be intentional about uh, intentional about guarding your heart yeah it's like what does that look like what do you mean what do you mean guard your heart mm -hmm. but then number two for out of it flows the issues mm -hmm. of life what does it say everything flows from this yeah well one translation says out of it flows the issues of life uh -huh. this translation that I, I read said everything you do flows basically from it. everything you do starts here in mm -hmm. the heart yeah. um, so if my heart is sad, yeah. it's going to affect everything around me. Mm -hmm. If my heart is bitter, mm -hmm. it's going to affect everything right. around me. And so I don't know, that's what sticks out to me. It's mm -hmm. like, whoa, this is way more important than mm -hmm. what it seems, what meets the eye. Well, yeah, for me, you really got to identify what the heart is. Mm -hmm. And so when the, the Bible speaks of the heart, it's talking about the center of your existence. Mm -hmm. It's talking about your spirit man. It's talking about the center of who you are. So we're three-part in makeup, just like God is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. We are spirit, soul, and body. And the spirit part of us is the real part of us. It is the center of who we are. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, the Bible says, above all else. That means that it's a huge priority. And there are so many different things that we can focus on. But above all of those other things, guard your heart. Because mm -hmm. everything that you do in life is going to come from the place of like having a pure heart. And so anything so, else? Yeah, you know, and the heart is a big deal. Now, you know, I'm sort of a health nerd. Mm -hmm. So I read all kinds of articles and things like that on the body. I just love how God made the body. Yeah. Um, and so I read a few articles a while ago about the importance of the heart mm -hmm. and how there is a place. Um, uh, the article was some type of um, science article. But anyway, they, mm -hmm. they said that surgeons know that there is a place in the heart mm -hmm. that you can't touch that place in the heart because if you you touch that place, they the person will automatically die. So there's this protected place in the heart. And so there are some theologians and things like that that argue that this may be the place that you know that the spirit rests, or this may be the most important place of the heart that you know where God speaks and all of that. But then also there's science now that says that you know we think like the brain is like it's like you know you can't your brain is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Well, there's science that says that your heart actually thinks more than what your brain does, mm -hmm. that there are more, um, uh, the heart speaks to the brain mm -hmm. more than the brain speaks to the mm -hmm. heart. Scientifically, isn't there more nerves that go from the heart to the brain or something like that? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I, and I, it's been a long yeah, time, yeah. and I don't know mm -hmm. the, the proper way to say it scientifically, mm -hmm. but that's the basic premise. Mm -hmm. And so when the Bible says, like, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. And when the Bible says to guard your heart mm -hmm. and so everything comes from the heart, you begin to look at it like, wow, this yeah. is like, this is on another level. Yeah. Serious. Um, has there been any times in your life where you've had um, a hard time guarding your heart? or have had problems with 
you know, with your heart or mm-hmm. times like, man, you know, my heart's not right. I need to get my heart right. Um, yeah, I think any time that I've been hurt, mm-hmm. any time I felt like, you know, I've been betrayed mm-hmm. or lost trust in someone, mm-hmm. I think those are times where you have to guard your heart. Mm-hmm. But then honestly, um, like something that I'm working on right now, and this seems dumb, mm-hmm. but like you you better guard your heart. Mm-hmm. Um, like even in traffic and, and getting angry in traffic and I stuff like that. I did not expect you to say that. I'm like, well, but no. thank God, this is a miracle. It's something that I'm working on uh-huh. and I'm working on it and the kids know, right? Because right. I, I drive them to and from school every day and actually Kenny's always in the passenger seat with us and actually on my way here today I was just like you see they are driving crazy and I started to talk about the crazy driving of these crazy dri- you know, drivers <laughs> and Kenny says well you know it's better if you just don't say anything at all because when you start talking about it then you get really upset come on Kenny <laughs> Because I'll be thinking the same thing. Oh like you goodness. always have oh. something to say about other people's I driving. I know, but I... But your driving as well is like mm, people could say okay. things about you. The, the pot should not call the kettle black. Yeah, yeah I think you're... I, I can feel you're starting to get off. towards you. But what I'm saying... But, Anyway, what I'm saying is that that's a heart issue. There's uh-huh. something in my heart whenever I get on the road. What is that? I'm like, is it pride that uh-huh. I feel like, how dare you cut me off? Do who do you think you like? Is it pride? Is uh-huh. it like just selfishness? I just want to have it my way. Like I don't know what it is that's mm. going on in my heart okay. when I hit the road. Okay. But I'm gonna figure it out. Hey. Every head bowed, every eye closed, because we're going to pray for Tabitha right now. But I sense breakthrough on the horizon. Thank you, Lord. God is doing something. He's up to something good. Stop it. And so, you know, there's a lot of people who are watching and viewing and um, not watching and viewing, watching and listening. And there's all kinds of heart things Mm -hmm. that we can deal with. Bitterness, unforgiveness, comparison, um, anger, hatred. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jump in. Jump in. Um, Um, uh, Jealousy, envy. Um. Uh, lust, perversion. Um, you basically. <laughs> you got any more? No, you basically yeah. said it all. But all of those are coming from the heart. So uh-huh. when the scripture says guard your heart above all else, it's basically telling us that we got to do the hard work of heart work. Mm-hmm. And so for me, you know, um, I got a lot of goals in life. There's a lot of things that I want to accomplish, but one of my main goals is, is that I want to have a pure heart. Mm-hmm. You know, I might not know everything. I might not be the best at what I do, but I can... I can do mm-hmm. something about my heart. I want to have a pure heart. Um, the people that I, I love in the Bible the most are people like David. Mm-hmm. David was a man after God's own heart. Absolutely. And when God thinks of me, I want him to think Ken is a, a man after my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, And David wasn't a perfect man, right. but he was still a pure-hearted man. Right. And so I don't know, for me, one of my major goals and my hope for those of you all who are watching is that you will be the kind of person that wants to have a clean heart, a pure heart and clean hands. Um, A pure heart and clean hands, Mm -hmm. clean hands and a pure heart. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like we live in a day and time that God Mm -hmm. is going to promote those who can just keep their heart right. Um, In an election year with all kinds of everybody has their opinion and philosophy. There's so much debate and anger. I believe that God is promoting those who can just have pure heart. Absolutely. You know, and speaking of David, yeah, David was not a perfect person, but David was quick to repent because his heart was soft mm-hmm. toward God. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says that, you know, not man, we can't look. We can only look on the outer part of right. a person. Only God can look and see our hearts. Right. And so it makes sense that that's the most important. Like, guard your heart. Mm-hmm. Man can't see it. Nobody else knows your intentions. Nobody else knows what's going on yeah. in there. You can dress it up to everyone right. else, right. but God sees. Yeah. And I preach this to my kids all the time. Only you, you're, you only... I only I talked to them about the audience of one, mm-hmm. only entertaining for an audience of one, and right. that's God. Yeah. And so I think it's just really good. Yeah. But I think that doing the hard work is hard work, mm-hmm. and some people won't do the hard work mm-hmm. of the hard work because it's so hard. Yeah. And so for us, we consistently um, go to counseling. For us, we're consistently trying to live a life that's self-aware. Where am I really? We're always listening to podcasts. We're always getting into the Word of God. Um, we're a- asking those who are um, people that we look to for answers. Accountability. To, accountability yeah. to help us because um, I want to do the hard work of mm-hmm. hard work. I think there's a lot of people that they get married and basically they're two messy people that's gotten married. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they are two people and, you know, people say, well, I want to find my better half. Yeah. Well, that's how marriages suck because it's two halves coming together. Yeah. If you're, I think the best way to correct your marriage or to have a better marriage is to be a great single before you get mm-hmm. married. 
the best thing that you can do to have a great marriage is to be a great single. Mm -hmm. And if you're a great single person who is whole and focused and unique and integrable and loves Jesus, when you're not a half of a person that you have all of this mess, but you've actually grown in God to where now when you meet somebody, there's two holes coming mm -hmm. together instead of two halves coming together. What I mean by that is that a lot of married people are suffering in their relationship right now because they just got too much junk in the mm. trunk. They have not done the hard work of heart work. Absolutely. I know of people that are just ready to leave their relationship and really there's for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. They just, they're not into it any longer. They thought that they made a mistake. They wish that they thought that maybe they married the wrong person. And really they don't have a revelation of faithfulness. They don't have a revelation of covenant. They don't have a relationship that when you get married, yeah. marriage equals work, meaning mm -hmm. that if it was defined, it should be called work. And they're just not willing to do the hard work. Mm -hmm. But here's my thing. We've been created for hard things. Yeah. And if it's in our life, we can take it. His grace is sufficient. Come and we on. have to roll up our sleeves and say, just because it's hard doesn't mean that I run mm -hmm. from it. I'm going to run to hard things. I've been graced for hard things. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we get married for the wrong reasons, not for what we can do for this person, but mm -hmm. for what they can do for us. Well, and I speak for myself. When we got married, you know, Ken made me happy. Yeah. Ken gave me peace. Mm -hmm. Ken gave me security. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that is only going to last for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I had to do the hard work of the heart work mm -hmm. to say, um, okay, I'm not happy anymore. But then what happens is we point that finger to the other person. I'm not happy and it's his fault. I don't have peace and it's his fault. I don't have security and it's their fault. Yeah. But really it's not. Mm -hmm. It, we have to go back to the heart and say, why am I feeling like this? Yeah. Why have... Um, you have to fill those voids with God, mm -hmm. not the other, not another person. Right. So, so it says, above all else, guard mm -hmm. your heart, for out of it, everything you do flows from it, mm -hmm. or out of the heart flows the issues of life. And so, if we were to just stop for a moment and do a self um, introspection of our life, everything that we have in our life mm -hmm. that we don't want, or let's just say most things, or let's just say many things yeah. that we have in our life that we don't want, could it be a product of where our heart is? Mm -hmm. If that's the case, if we change our hearts, we can change our situation. Wow. So let's start working on the ground of our yeah. hearts. Let's make sure that we guard our hearts above all else. Here's a few scriptures. Tell me what you get out of this one. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things, and it's desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Yikes. <laughs> um, that blows my mind mm -hmm. coming from a society where we say, well, just follow your heart. Right. You know, whatever you feel in your heart, what is your heart telling you? My heart's telling me to go punch them in the face right now. That's what my heart is telling me. <laughs> People say you can't help who you love. We say you better help who you love. Absolutely. You know, because your heart can't, you can't give yourself everything that your heart wants mm -hmm. because the Bible says that your heart is most deceitful of all things and it's exactly. desperately wicked. When you think about a child, a two-year-old. Right. That baby does whatever its heart wants to do. Yeah, so me, me, <laughs> mine, me, me, mine, me, 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 me. I don't no. care who I wake up in the middle of the mm -hmm. night. I don't care about your sleep patterns. I don't care what time you got to go to work. I want my bottle. I want to yes. be fed. I need to be changed right here, right now. So it's a complete contradiction to yeah. what most of us have believed about our heart. Yeah, yeah. And so we can't follow our hearts and mm -hmm. things because our heart are deceitfully wicked. But that's why we all need to get born again. Mm -hmm. Because when you accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, Jesus, the power that rose Jesus from the dead now steps into your spirit mm -hmm. that is disconnected from God because of man's sinfulness and God's holiness. And the power of the resurrection is not this, just that Jesus got up from the grave on the third day. It's that when you accept Jesus, he steps into your heart and mm -hmm. he brings your dead spirit back to life again. Amen. So now you get to hear from God. Now you get to sense the presence of God. Now you have the peace of God and the voice of God. And that's why 8 billion people around the world, we all need Jesus so that he can give us a new yeah. heart. He replaces that old wicked heart. He takes that away and he gives us a heart of flesh mm. and of faith. Man. Proverbs 21, 2, check this one out. It okay. says, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Mm. What sticks out to you from um, that one? I think that, I think we already talked about that a little bit, uh -huh. that yeah, sometimes you just feel justified mm -hmm. and right in what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that God thinks that it's right. right. And it goes back to the word of God. How do we know the will of God? Because we know the word of God. So we go to the word of God to find out, do I have the right attitude toward yeah. this? How yeah. should I be doing Ooh. this? You know, am I living my life according to principles yeah. and, and you know, what God says? Mm -hmm. And I think that's how we know if our heart is right. Not because our mom said it was right or mm -hmm. our best friend 
and said that it was right. Mm -hmm. We hold it up against God's word. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many people nowadays that would rather change the Bible than let the Bible change them. Yeah. And one of the most dangerous things that we can do as believers is to kind of succumb to secular culture to where we don't believe God's word is what he says that it is. Mm -hmm. You know, God's word is truth. It's life. It's the lamp to our feet, the light to our path. Mm -hmm. um, it is living and breathing. Every other book that we read is a dead book yeah. with dead words. But the word of God is alive. The Bible says it's active. It's mm -hmm. sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts down to the dividing of spirit and soul. It, 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 it is your one offensive weapon mm -hmm. that you have as a believer. So Satan's main mm -hmm. strategy nowadays is to cause us to be so smart we get dumb. We're so smart with history that we cannot prove because we did not live there, but some YouTube channel we watched or book that we read that will kind of come in and try to contradict the word of God or who Jesus mm -hmm. is. What he wants to do is get us to distrust the Bible. If he can get us to distrust the Bible or discredit the Bible, Satan takes away the one offensive weapon you have, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word, the of, word God. of God. The word of God is what cuts the devil. It will mm -hmm. cut depression off of your life. It will cut addictions out of your life. It will restore marriages. We see the dead are raised by the mm -hmm. word of God. He watches over his word to perform it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, every word. word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It has always been the word. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the manifestation of the word. He was the word made flesh. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was, was God. God. So the word, the only way you love God is that you love his word. And the only way you know God is that you know his word. Yeah. Here's the challenge. Yeah. We live in a day and time where people would rather uplift their opinions mm -hmm. and their feeling over the word of God. Mm -hmm. And what the Bible is saying here is that every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the wow. Lord weighs the heart. Every way of a man is right. Like, I'm okay. I can do whatever I want to do. It's my body. It's my choice. It's how I feel. It's what I think. And it's never been about that. Not for the believer. It can be like that for those who are not believers because God is not the God of their life yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for us who understand that Jesus is not just Savior, He's, He's Lord. Lord. We submit ourselves mm -hmm. to His Word mm -hmm. because we cannot trust ourselves. So here's what I've realized that my way is wrong, mm. his way is right. Yeah. doesn't matter what I think about something. I'm not going to use, I'm not going to take my opinion to change the Bible. I'm going to let the Bible change my opinion because the Lord weighs my heart. Mm -hmm. And when he looks at my heart, I want him to see a heart that's lined up, submitted yeah. to his word. Yeah, I think that, and I'm reminded, that's what takes me back to David, to King David. God said that he had the heart of God, mm -hmm. but he did so many wrongs, right. you know. But how did he have the heart of God if he did so much wrong? Yeah. Because even when he did wrong, he was quick to repent, and he was quick to yes. say, oh, my way is wrong. Yeah. Your way is right, yeah. Lord. And I think we are like that today. Yeah. We can do, we're going to do wrong. We're going to do dumb stuff, right. say dumb things. Right. But as long as we're quick to repent and say, oh, my way is wrong. Ooh. Lord, your way is right. Yeah. You know, I was just with one of my overseers um, at a conference, and he was talking about King Saul, mm -hmm. who was the first king of Israel. And there came a time where the Bible says that God repented that he yeah. had made Saul king. And he asked me the question before he was ministering. He says, why do you think that God who knows everything repented for anointing Saul as king? And he says, here's the reason, because he, God repented because Saul never repented, mm. meaning that Saul messed up, he got into pride, he wanted to destroy um, David, you know, so many uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. And because he did not repent, it caused God to repent. Mm. David, on the other hand, is known after a man after God's own heart. And we, his name, there's a city of David. We all still love David. David was an adulterer. And David was a murderer. Mm -hmm. He had an adulterous affair with Bathsheba, then put Uriah, her husband, on the front line of fire, had him killed. Mm -hmm. But when we think about David, we think a man after God's own heart, a person that we can learn some things from, not all things, but some things. Yeah. Why? Well, the reason that we uplift um, David and we don't talk much about Saul is simply because even though David was a mess, he repented of his mess and he got it right. Saul was a mess, and actually he was probably less messy than David, but Saul didn't repent. And because Saul didn't repent, it caused God to repent. The point of the story is this, is that we don't want to live the kind of lives 
where God has put us in the office, favored us and promoted us that later on he will repent because mm -hmm. our hearts are not right. Mm -hmm. This is the importance of having the right kind of heart. Absolutely. To live a repentant life. And I think, you know, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're new to the faith and you're you're new to being a believer, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't understand like what it means to cause God to repent. Okay. But you know, like if we have parents, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like we have kids, things like that. Like I don't want to do anything to cause my mother or father to repent, like to hurt their feelings, to make them feel like, man, I that hurt my heart that my child did that. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. We have three kids and we are teaching them and we're pouring our life into them yeah. we are giving everything to them and yeah. we want them to do the right things and it hurt you know it would hurt us mm -hmm. if they would just do something that directly disobeyed us mm -hmm. or took them out of the will of God for their lives mm -hmm. now that's you know our, our earthly relationship with our parents mm -hmm. but God is the same way he's our heavenly father mm -hmm. and he didn't just give birth to us he created us he breathed life into us mm -hmm. and um, I think that now when we think that for God to repent, it's like we can hurt him. Mm -hmm. We can wound him. Yeah. We can make him disappointed in us. And I personally, I don't want to do that to my daddy, yeah. my heavenly father. I don't want to do that. I'll give you another angle. Um, uh, that angle is very good. My, uh, my other angle would be um, that repent would be that God wished that he just wouldn't have done something. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know with your kids, if you're ever like, man, I just wish I wouldn't have given that that, that video game. Or, man, I wish I wouldn't have let them play football. Yeah. Or, man, I wish I would have never had those kids. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's extreme, it, but yeah, extreme. my goodness. But no, there's some parent yeah. out there that knows what I'm talking about, man. I wish if they're having so much trouble with a kid, yeah. man, I wish I wouldn't have had that kid. Mm -hmm. Can you think? of how bad that kid has to be or how much trouble mm -hmm. they have to cause mm -hmm. to cause the one that gave birth to them on mm -hmm. the download. They won't say it out loud, yeah, but somebody yeah. knows what I'm talking about. Man, I wish I wouldn't even have had that kid. Mm. That's what it's like when we live outside of the will of God, that I don't want to live a life where God, my father, my maker is like, man, I wish I would have gave his gifting to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I wish I wouldn't have called him. I wish he wouldn't have even been born. He's done more bad than good. Mm -hmm. I gave him so many. I lay before him life and death, blessings and curses. But for whatever reason, he's using the gift of free mor free morals that I've the wow. free more um, the free will that I've given him. Yeah. He's used that against me. And I just you know God just took me through a journey where I was reading through Chronicles, mm -hmm. and I read First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, and I come through the book of Israel, and I was just amazed to look at all these kings mm -hmm. from Israel. That when they did bad, they got bad. And when they did good, they got good. But they couldn't get it through their thick head mm. to just live for God. Yeah. And it was like out of, let's say, 20 kings, yeah. there was like two of them that lived good and like maybe two of them that lived like where the Bible says they were half-hearted uh -huh. or they were like, you know, like lukewarm. Yeah, they were kind of like they would try to do what was mm -hmm. right most of the time, but sometimes mm -hmm. messed up. The rest of them, like 15, like the, the majority of them. The, the Bible says that they committed the sins of their father. Yeah, they they, they were wicked. They, they, they you know they were they allowed the Babylonian culture that I don't think they'd even went into Babylon yet. But what I'm saying, they just allowed the world's yeah. culture to affect them in such a negative way. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to be my mm -hmm. heart. And I know I'm speaking to somebody here. Yeah. And you know what? We live in a day and time where the strings of your heart is being pulled in so many directions. Mm -hmm. Compromise is the norm. I'm not just talking about secularly. I'm talking about people that are in leadership. I'm talking about those of you all who are in ministry right now, those of you all who've been saved for 20 and 30 years. Compromise has now become the norm. Matter of fact, when you find someone who doesn't compromise, it's almost like there, there's, um, I can feel this sometime even with us. We don't know if we might be invited to this camp or that camp because our integrity is here mm -hmm. and our holiness is here. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to come to your little your, your, your little green room party. I don't want to come to certain little unintegrable things. That's just not my mm -hmm. flow. Mm -hmm. I was doing that when I was 19 years old. I'm not, not interested. Impressed. I'm not impressed. <laughs> not I'm impressed. not impressed by your drunkenness. I'm not impressed by your, your profanity. I'm mm -hmm. not impressed by your crude jokes. I'm not impressed by that. And it's not because I think I'm all that. It's because I know where I used to be and I know who I am now. Mm -hmm. And since I've been delivered from who I used to be, there's no way that I want to go back there. It's like the dog returning to his vomit. Yeah. That's really gross. But look, I've been there, done that. I'm not trying to go back there. But I'm telling you, the social pressure just to kind of succumb 
to that which is norm. Mm-hmm. And don't be, don't, don't be, oh, it's okay. It's not a big deal. God will forgive us. I mean, we're under grace. I just feel like as a believer, I'm just going to have higher standards. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have legalism, but I'm going to use my grace-filled liberty to live a life that is beyond reproach, mm-hmm. a life that is blameless, a life that is on mm-hmm. another level, a life where I carry an anointing, a life where angels can be in our home and not feel out of, out, out of place, a life where I travel and you don't have to worry about what I'm watching on TV mm-hmm. in my hotel by myself, a life where I travel and, and you know people come up and talk to me and I'm not looking at somebody else wondering if I can get them back to the hotel room. I want to live a life that if heaven is playing my unsupervised arenas on a big screen in heaven, that all heaven is applauding the way that I live when Amen. nobody else is around. Amen. That has to do with the heart. Yeah. And I want to raise up more men and women of God who have that kind of heart. I'm not living for the audience of nobody else. I don't need anybody's yeah. platform. God's yeah. given me my own. I want to live so he can say well done to yeah. me. Yeah, And it's about pleasing the Father. Yeah. For me to think of the smile on my heavenly Father's place. You know, my dad died when I was six years old. But I remember my relationship with him and I was like daddy's girl he was you know tall a boxer really strong he carried me around on his shoulders wherever he was so he was like six two so there I am up on you know way high above everyone I was just like the queen of the world on top of my daddy's shoulder and I would see the smile on his face but if I would liken that you know some people didn't grow up with a father but I take that and I liken that to my heavenly father the smile that I would see on his face when he looks down and like you know what Tabitha's doing it Tabitha's getting her heart right. I see her in traffic right now, but oh, I see you're trying to get it right too. Yeah. Come on, girl, you got this. You yeah. can do this. Yeah. So I just, it, it, it is, it's a heart issue. Uh-huh. And you are, that's one of the reasons why I'm attracted to you. Mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons why when we didn't get it, like when we first met in high, uh, um, in college, I wasn't even saved yet, but mm-hmm. I could see your heart mm-hmm. and I could see your integrity. Like you wanted to do the right thing. Uh-huh. And, and I was messy yeah. and I was messing stuff up. And that's where grace comes in. Absolutely. You it's know? like, you know, yeah, you, you, you weren't, you're not perfect, yeah. but I saw that your I saw that your heart was right. Uh-huh. And then even I, there's a book that I'm encouraging you to write and finish. Uh-huh. But you wrote a book a while ago called Beyond the Gray, yeah. and um, but you just kind of put it on the shelf. I don't mm-hmm. think it was the right timing. But I love that about you is just you know we talk about often about how you can live life in the gray mm-hmm. or you can live life beyond the gray. Mm-hmm. So the gray is what the gray is like that. Uh, I don't know. It might be right. It might. The not Bible be doesn't right. say this, so let me go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. You know everybody else is doing it. It's Mm -hmm. not really sin, but does it lead to sin? It's permissible, but is it wise? Yeah. Too many people are living beyond the gray. And we got to get beyond the gray, mm-hmm. beyond the gray, beyond well, you, the questionable areas. If you stay out of the gray, will you stay out of trouble? Yeah. But once you start to get in the gray, where how do you know when you cross the line between, okay, I'm in the gray, but now it's all the way over. I'm just all in it right now. And, yeah. and how did I get here? Yeah. Because yeah. first I tiptoed over into the gray. Yeah. You know, well, the gray is an identifier of where your heart is. And if Satan can get you with just look, what is it? It says it's the little foxes, the small foxes that, that spoil, spoil the, the vine. vine. It's just the little things. It's just a, it's, it's a little wrong movie here. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a little conversation that you shouldn't have had here. It's just a little bit. Of somebody slide into your DMs, but you didn't you didn't stop it here. Mm-hmm. It's just a little conversation with somebody that you're not married to here. It's a little it's not, it's not the, it's, it's the first sip of wine. It's the, it's, it's the now it's went to two glasses. Now it's went to three glasses. It's now it's went to four. It's just a little area. Desensitizing, you know, the more you do, yeah. the more desensitized you deal. become. It's not that big a deal, mm-hmm. but it's leading to a bigger deal. Mm-hmm. You're getting set up. And there's a scripture that says that sin lies at the door. Mm -hmm. What that means is that sin is just waiting for the right time to pounce on you. And when you know who you really are, Mm -hmm. you see, the thing about the gray areas is that you got to come to the place where you don't need them. Mm. Like, I don't give a care about alcohol, drinking, cigars, smoking, gambling. I don't care about any of that. Like, I don't need any of that. I got so much joy and so much fulfillment out of just the, the God's green earth, like skiing, like going to the beach, like enjoying my family, like cracking jokes, yeah. like having fun, like dancing till the sun comes up without all of the substances. Mm-hmm. I mean, so what happens is that you start to look at certain things. I don't know. Just jump in with me, baby. I, I'm sorry. I got lost <laughs> in what I was saying. I was thinking about the sun. I, I, mean, <laughs> I was all thinking about the beach and all the things you get to enjoy. I, like, I started it. I started it because I got you uh-huh. going on talking about the gray and living a life beyond yeah. the gray. And you were just talking yeah. about like those, you have to um, draw boundaries. And we talk about guarding the heart. Mm-hmm. That's that's okay. Mm-hmm. There's boundaries. Mm-hmm. Am I going to live in the gray? Let's just say there's, there's white and black, mm-hmm. right? You got gray in between. Mm-hmm. If, if mm-hmm. black is the perfect will of God, right. 
and white is the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to stay in the black, right? Yeah. Once I start to get over into the gray, mm -hmm. it's going to it's going the wrong. Eh, it's going wrong. in the wrong direction. It's not sin yet, mm -hmm. but it's the wrong direction. Right. It's not sin. That's why you you know. Mm -hmm. So what I was saying is that sin lies at the door, mm -hmm. and so and that's what people don't understand. It's just waiting for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's just the little things like mm -hmm. that, and you can actually. So we'll act, let me give them this three ways to protect your heart because I think that that's what will help people yeah. live a life that's beyond the gray. Yeah. Beyond the gray is coming. I feel it coming. It's coming ah, back. It's coming back. On. It's coming I'm back. Ready for it. If you want beyond the gray, please let us know. It's it, it, we got to write it. We got to get it out there mm -hmm. because I just think it's a it's a it's a perspective on kingdom living that needs to be promoted for the time that we live in. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't think it's possible. Yeah. You know, I remember when you first, um, when I first came to you, this is over 20 years ago, I mm -hmm. said, sweetheart, I don't want to drink no more. Because back in the day, I was a social drinker, and she was more of come from an addictive background. I was. So I came to her, and I was like, so I, I started going to a church, and I asked my pastor, I said, hey, I drink wine here and there, and I have a glass here and there. And I said, what do you think? And he says, well, you're not going to go to hell for drinking wine. And it was a joke. And, there, and you know, I was in a class, mm -hmm. and people started laughing. But after that, he says, well, I don't drink. And um, he says, the reason is, it's because Proverbs 31 says that kings and princes sustain from strong drink. He says, I view myself as a king. I guess it just depends on how you view yourself. And at wow. 23 years old, as a social drinker, as a person who would go to different states to buy, say, not special brew, blueberry, strawberry, um, and then sell it out of my trunk, and a person who um, would be in nightclubs and do different things and married to someone that I would come home and she would be passed out around my toilet, I made a decision for my family. I just said, I don't need it. If you, Mr. Man of God, um, you seem successful, you seem like things are working well for you, you don't drink, and, the, and I view myself as a king as well. I'm new to the faith, but I view myself as a king. I'm happy to say that I've been sober now for 23 years, okay? And um, why was I sharing that story? Help me out. You, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so good. You're talking about lost. the book Beyond the Gray yes. and how so many people need to hear that today. Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't know. I think it was just going on how uh -huh. some of those decisions that we make are difficult decisions. Uh -huh. Like you made that. You came to me and oh, said. Oh, I remember. I, so I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I came to you and okay, said. You came to me and said, babe, uh -huh. you know, and I remember our marriage just wasn't really there yet. You know, we're still right. hanging on here by a thread. Mm -hmm. And you said, well, I think that, you know, we shouldn't drink anymore. Right. Because I was with you when you asked that question and I was embarrassed. And then I was mad and wanting to fight because when you asked the question, the there were like 40 other people in the room right. and they were all like, oh, like, how dare he ask that question? And I was like, what? Why not? Why can't? Don't be. You know, I was I was ready to fight anyway. Um, when you, I was there, there when you asked the question, but when you came home and told me like, you don't think we should drink anymore. I was like, well, how, what are we going to do for fun? That's or, what I, that's how my are point. we going to be happy? Like, what do you mean? What are we going to do on our anniversary this and on chick, holidays? And like, what are we going to do? Like I was sneaking alcohol. Like this I just chick act like she had never heard that you don't have to have alcohol. I just alcohol. could not fathom She it. could not fathom that we would go a birthday without drinking or go through New Year's without up, drinking. We might, we might not have had food in our cabinet when I was growing up in the <laughs> projects, but if you open up the pantry or like there was this little furnace room, there was beer stacked from the floor to the ceiling cases of alcohol. So I just, I, did, I I just well couldn't fathom what her. it was like. Wig off. I mean, it, it, she, it was like she could not even, you know, and that's what when you start talking about living holiness, living holy and beyond the gray in today's society, it's almost like you're speaking Chinese and they're speaking English. But it goes It's back, almost like a different language. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? You're telling me that I could live that way? Yeah, there's better ways yeah. that you can just live. Just because you've never heard about it or just because you don't understand if God's word says it, if you'll open your heart to it yeah. and be receptive to it, then you can do it. So even though like I couldn't fathom fathom it, but I was just like, okay, babe, well, I'll try it. And my attitude toward God was, is just like, okay, Lord, if it's possible, show me how. Well, that's but, a hard know, thing. Help me do it. That's a hard thing. 
That's a hard thing. But that's, your, your it's heart just was like, pure. okay, just if it's so, let it, well, let it be so. What you were saying in your heart was that is I'm going to follow him as he follows mm-hmm. Christ. And what I said in my heart was that I'm going to follow my pastor as he follows well, Christ. Well, also, I'm like, look, we met in the nightclub. Yeah. Um, and you had a drink in your hand. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay, well, if he can do it, well, then, okay, I'll watch you do it. And if you do it, I'll do it too. Listen, <laughs> she better be glad that I made that decision. <laughs> Because she would probably be I'm in rehab right you, now somewhere. You, you, you're right, baby. Because the truth is, is that her personality is addictive. It whether is. it be chocolate, whether it be food, so forth and so on. Caffeine. I'm more of a social kind of guy. I'm just kind. I just need a little white Russian. Just take the edge off of it a little bit. I got my drinks of choice. I got the, I got you know a little Roman Coke, oh a little gosh. sex on the beach. A little, yeah, I got a little drinks going on. You know what I'm saying? But I'm happy to say that we found that you can live beyond the gray. And we've been sober now, both of us, for 23 years. You better give God praise right now because it is a miracle for this one here. All right? Can you imagine the fights that we <laughs> haven't gotten in because we weren't buzzed? Can you imagine <laughs> the women that I haven't tried to <laughs> flirt with because I wasn't sober-minded? The mistakes that I haven't made because I wasn't. Help us, And the Lord. amount of brain cells that we've been able to save because alcohol does kill your brain I cells. I need my brain cells. Anyway, let's get off of that. Somebody needed that. Three ways to protect your heart. Number one, don't be afraid of the hard work. Yeah. Okay. Instead, you got to embrace it. If your cholesterol is high, you have to go do the hard work of eating differently mm-hmm. and changing your taste palate. Mm-hmm. You cannot just stop by every fast food establishment. Yes, you're going to have to start the meal prep and you're going to have to do the hard work. If you want to get out of debt, mm-hmm. you got to do the hard work. Mm-hmm. Listen, you're going to have to live beneath your means. You're going to have to say no today so that you can say yes tomorrow. No today, but not forever. That's the style. That's one of the phrases that we live by. But you're going to have to be willing to do the hard work. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have a pure heart, you're going to have to do the hard work of the hard work. The things that other people say, oh, that's too much. Oh, you're too spiritual. Oh, it don't take all that. It literally sometimes takes more than that. You have to embrace the hard work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes we think that because it's our heart, we, we, we kind of like, oh, well, if you feel like that, then maybe you shouldn't. Or, okay, if it's that hard for you, maybe you should do this. And we give people crutches and we make excuses for people and we baby people. Yeah. But that keeps them in their situation. Yeah. That doesn't make anything better. Mm-hmm. But I think that you got to know, like, when I had to fight to overcome depression mm-hmm. and anxiety and fear, I it hurt. I cried. Yeah. I cried tears for weeks and months mm. forgiving the person who abused me. That hurt hurt me to my soul, Mm -hmm. to everything. I had to go through therapy and visit my childhood and re, 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 um, Read, talk, talk about the events that happened in my childhood that hurt me so much. That was painful and it hurt. And some people be like, "Oh, it hurts too much. Just leave them alone. We're not gonna, we're, you know, we're not gonna do that." But that will keep you depressed. That will keep you bound. Mm. That will keep you sad and fearful. Mm. But when you do the hard work, that's where you can break the chains and set yourself free. And so I just encourage people Come do on. the hard work. It is worth it. Yeah, the more tears, the better the freedom you're gonna have. Yeah. Number two, if you want to protect your heart, you got to increase the sacred and decrease the secular. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me flip it around. You got to decrease the secular and increase the sacred. Okay. Because what goes into your heart is going to affect what's coming out of your life. It's the input output kind of Mm -hmm. scenario. What you sow, you're also going to reap. If you Mm -hmm. sow to that, which is spirit, you'll reap life and peace. If you sow to that, which is flesh, you'll reap um, death and destruction. And so Um, I just was in the UK not too long ago, and I was doing a young adults conference there in the UK. And, you know, I was so excited to go just because I've been hearing the sounds of revival. I've been Mm -hmm. hearing it from prophets that I really respect. You know, um, the UK and Great Britain and England has went through a very dark age spiritually, you know, got very religious on Mm -hmm. us. And the movement of the Holy Spirit had been not as much as what it could be. Mm -hmm. And so but I've been hearing it prophesied that revivals coming to the UK, revivals coming to Great Britain, revivals coming to England. And so I, I wanted to go out there and be a part of the conference to see it. And man, it, it was true. There was such a hunger that was there. There was like this, um, this desire to, this, 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 this joy and this um, pure hearted desire to go into the deeper things of God. But anyway, I was wow. preaching the last night of this conference and I was talking about a little bit what we talked about already, mm-hmm. living beyond the gray. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I keep talking about this. It just must be time there for it. There it is. Um, I was talking about holiness mm-hmm. and not living a life 
that's secular, you know, and I'm, and I'm talking about what we just talked about. How I said something like, you know what? I don't need to go to a happy hour to get drunk. I'm drunk in the spirit right now, 24-7, 365. I'm drunk right now. And I said it on purpose. Classic knew, Ken yeah, Glader. It's classic. <laughs> that there was a pub on every corner. Actually, right beside the church, there was a, um, a brewery, and there was probably 3,000 kegs right beside wow. the church. And when I said you don't have to go to a happy hour to get happy, I came in happy right now because I'm drunk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. When I said that, these young people who are in a very secular society mm -hmm. that's come through a spiritual dark time mm -hmm. jumped to their feet and was like, I ain't never heard nothing like that before. The joy of the Lord mm. fell in the meeting. I didn't ask them to come to the front. Young people ran to the front and started dancing under jubilee and celebration, drunk in the spirit, out of the joy of the Lord, doing the do -si do <laughs> hand in hand. I have pictures of, of people climbing over the seat. Yeah. And then after we danced and shouted and God gave us a prophetic song, he was like, we got that joy, joy, joy. I mean, we got that joy. It, it, it was just, we were making this stuff up under the, 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 the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. After that, um, I gave them an opportunity to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and probably two, three hundred of them received the baptism wow. of the Holy Spirit with their initial evidence of praying so in the Spirit. Good. And I just believe when you increase the sacred and yeah. decrease the secular, mm -hmm. God's going to honor it. And so one of the ways you do that is that you got to guard your ear gate and your eye gate because it affects what's in your Absolutely. heart. If you're going to increase the sacred, you need to listen to more um, preaching of the word of God, more worship music. You need to decrease more rated R, um, mature TV content, stuff that you know is filled with perversion, violence, death, mayhem, sexual perversion, all of the things that are evil. We live in a day where that's normal to digest. Yeah. And it is not normal for your spirit. Mm -hmm. If you want a pure heart, you have to guard. I'm not giving you a law. I'm giving you a principle. You have to guard what you are listening to and what you are watching. Mm -hmm. Because what you hear and what you see will affect what you believe. And you cannot guard your heart above all else if you just let everybody who is anti-Christ minister through songs and it's not about the beat of the songs but it is about the words Absolutely. and if you were to break down some words from some very popular artists you will see that it's filled with perversion anti-christ um a uh, uh, terminology yeah. gender confusion um sexual perversion all kinds of different things and we got to know what's for us and what's not we for us know. i don't give a care how many grammys you win i don't care how many uh, academy awards you win i don't care how good that beat sounds but i gotta listen deeper than that because i'm deeper than that Absolutely. Uh -huh. I have songs from back in the day that at some time, every once in a while I'll go and put on a song because I'm like, oh yeah, if I'm running or something like that. And then I start listening to the lyrics and I'm like, oh my goodness, what did they, did I used to sing this? Because I know, you know, like, like, what am I doing? Like, I got. I can't even listen to it. I have to turn it off because I'm so convicted um, by just guarding my heart yeah. and, you know, my ears and, and what I'm putting in. So I it's can crazy. spit lyrics for you right now from songs we listened to back in the day that is so perverse. Mm -hmm. I wish that I wouldn't have listened I mean, to it because sometimes when it gets in there, I know it, you know, I. You know, well, it's I, music, you know, it's it's like music is created by God. You know what I mean? And just the in lyrics and the words and things like that. So we're supposed to meditate on the word of God day and night. And so mm. um, the enemy, you know, Satan has taken music and perverted it. And now we're singing these songs, but we're, we're meditating on, you know, uh, cheating on our spouse or getting another person or sex or drugs or, you know, whatever it is day and night. And it's mm. putting us in the wrong direction for as a man thinks in his heart. So is he. This is good for parents to know. Yeah. Like we have to guard our children and teach our children the importance of music because they're meditating. on. And, and you hear the statistics of what's going on with high school kids and teenagers and things like that. We're at all time high rates for suicide and low self-esteem and depression and all of these things. And I personally believe a lot of it is what we're putting in our heart through music, through what we're watching on TV. Right. It's crazy. I know we could do a whole other episode on that, but... Yeah, guard so, your heart. So my 14-year-old, quick story. I um, noticed that there was certain stuff coming up on our Alexa, and it was like maybe 
I don't know, Drake or something else. It was coming up on our Alexa. I'm like, who is listening to this stuff, right? So I knew kind of who I think that it was. And I said, I brought <laughs> this child into my office. And I went to, before I brought him up, I went and I got antifreeze from the garage. And then I got a cup of water, right? And so I got clear glasses, all right? And I put antifreeze in one glass and I put water in one glass. And I brought the kid in. I said, listen, um, this is water. And do you know what this is? They was like, no, nah, I don't know what that is. I said, it's antifreeze. I said, this stuff is deadly. It's poison. You're not supposed to drink it at all. I want you to drink it right now. They was like, come on. <laughs> I said, listen, I want you to drink it right now. I want you to get this glass. I want you to drink this antifreeze right now. And they're like, I'm not going to drink the antifreeze. And I said, well, why won't you drink the antifreeze? They said, because it's poison. And I said, well, that's the same thing that you do when you listen to a bunch of perverse music things that are filled with profanity, things that are ungodly, you are putting poison in your heart. And if you won't drink this antifreeze, you probably need to be very careful about what you're listening to because this right here, this antifreeze will kill you naturally, but what you're listening to could kill you spiritually. Mm. The kid was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I said, um, but would you drink this water? Of course you would, why? Because we are made up of water, we all need water to be healthy. And the water is the word of God. And we need the washing of water by the word. And if you can listen to stuff that feeds your heart and feeds your yeah. spirit, it's going to be nothing but strength to you. And the poison will kill you. And so, so anyway, good. you can use that if you want to use it. Use but it. We got to do everything that we can to try to help our children. It's true. Get can, it. can I just say this, though, yeah. when it comes to music, TV, things like that, especially with music, you don't even have to compromise. Whatever genre of music that you like, there is Christian music. It really is. With good lyrics yeah. out there, good beats. I mean, yeah. it's like I have no lack of good music yeah. to listen to. Yeah. So. And I didn't even, like, our, our rule hasn't been, like, it has to be Christian. Yeah. It just has to not be anti-Christian. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to be positive. Now, I would prefer that it be godly and, and vertical and going up this way. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I might listen to some old school R&B and stuff. As long as it doesn't cross the line with profanity and perversion and Absolutely. death and murder and mayhem and all those kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with it. And I'm going to help them navigate through that moment. But that's just a little, a little something for y'all. But anyway, here's the last one. Number three, if you want to protect your heart, you got to set some boundaries for yourself. OK, you got to set some boundaries. Mm. Now, here's the deal. And I want you to be able to see this. Like, let's imagine that I had some tape. OK, now, many people, when it comes to their life, let's put the tape down on the floor. What you, they like to do is to kind of here's the tape. They like to tiptoe right over here and they like to live on the edge of the tape. Now, let's assume that this tape represents what God says you can and can't do. Like if you cross over the line, it's considered sin. What people like to do is like they like to come right up to the edge of sin, mm. play with sin, think about sin, do everything they can as long as it's not sin. They like to go right up to the edge. For those of you all who want to live beyond the gray and you want a pure heart, don't put the tape of your life over here. You got to put the tape of your life over here. What I mean by that is that I don't live right up to the edge of what's not sin. I live way over here. Why? Because there is a gap in between where I am and what's actually sin. Yeah. Therefore, if I'm over here and I cross this line and I get over into this area, it's still not sin because sin is way over here. I can just jump back over here. What most people do is they live way too close to Sodom and Gomorrah. You live way too close to that which is secular. <laughs> but if you can live over here, which is beyond the gray, then if you happen to have a bad day or two, you are still far away from sin. So and that's good. really what it means <laughs> to have a pure heart is that you're living beyond reproach. You're living a blameless life. You're living a life where people can't even find something to false accuse you about the best that you possibly. Now, people make up stuff nowadays to false accuse you about. But I'm saying you're doing the best that you can to live well beyond this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so that I you can. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I feel like that gives me, it allows me to be self-aware enough to know that, like, if I live my life right up on the line, then I'm going to make mistakes. Yeah. But then when I make mistakes, I'm right over in sin. Yeah. Why can't I want to set my tent over here yeah. to where, okay, now when I make a mistake, which I know I'm going to mess up and make a mistake, I didn't fall into sin. Yeah. I don't have to have a big fall. I don't have to get fired from my job. Nobody, ha you know, I just, okay, Lord, sorry, you know, I but repent. But you know why people do that? It's because they just inch. They used to live and they just inch. Well, that ain't that big a deal. And everybody else is doing it. And they say that ain't a sin. And that ain't that bad. 
and, and, and you're getting closer and closer to Egypt when you've been delivered to leave, from Egypt so to live funny. in the promised land. I'll give you one more scripture. We're done. Psalms 51 and 10. It says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within mm. me. If this bore witness with you, we want to hear from you. Um, here's our prayer for you is that God would help you create a clean heart, that he would create a clean heart in you and mm. renew a right spirit within you so that you can have a pure heart, y'all. You know, Matthew 5 and 8, it says, blessed are the pure in heart, yeah. for they'll see God. How many of you all want to see God? I want to see God in our church. I want to see God in our small groups. I want to see the manifested presence of God. I want to see the outpour of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are the pure in heart. Yes. So they'll see God. Everybody else is going to, they're going to study about God. They're going to read doctrine about God. We're going to see God. Mm -hmm. And he's going to bless and promote those who are pure hearted because that's just what he does. Amen. Hey, we're out of time today, but man, we, 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 we're so thankful that you joined in with us on today. Um, our hope that this podcast was exactly what you needed to hear, how you needed to hear it. Um, we have a couple things that we want to offer you to hopefully help you get better, specifically in marriage. This is what we've realized, is that for a great marriage, there must be a great investment. A lot of the times when it comes to being married, people want a great marriage, but they're not willing to make a great investment. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned over 20, almost 25 years of marriage is that if you want a great marriage, there has to be a great investment, all right? And so we've created a tool to simply help your marriage get better. It's called the Better Marriage Boot Camp. And we believe that if you can give us 90 days, we can help get your marriage better, all right? Now, this is the premise for what we've created. You know, marriage counseling on average is between 100 to $400 per hour per session, depending upon what city you're in. Now, what I found out as a person who goes to counseling monthly is that I love counseling. I would encourage all of you all to go to counseling. But many times when I go to counseling, there is a percentage of my counseling that we spend kind of getting used to each other. Hey, how was your week? How's your kids? How's your kids? How was your week? You know, so what we decided to do is that we needed to create something that was pointed, that it was focused. So we've taken 25 years of marriage ups and downs, and we've put them into an online course. You don't have to come to us for it. You can actually do it at home, on demand, at your own pace. Mm -hmm. We've taken the 12 top principles that moved our marriage from divorce over into being best friends now, and we've outlined them for you. We are giving, this is beyond the podcast, y'all. This is beyond the sessions that you get in church. This is us being your marriage mentors and your marriage coaches to kind of give you every tool that you need, homework along with it, everything that you need to help your marriage be better, okay? Now, if you're interested in this, we also have this 90-day devotional that we would love to get in your hands. We actually give this to you for free as a part of our... Now, if you put this devotional, which is a 90-day journey to help you have personal time daily with God every single day, if you put that together with the 90-day boot camp, I'm telling you now, your marriage is going to go to a whole nother level. You know, when we looked upon other master classes like this, many times they will cost about $700 to $1,200. Matter of fact, there are some very popular motivational speakers that sometimes it's $2,500 or $3,000 for this kind of information. But our goal was to try to make it as affordable as we could for like everyday families around yeah. the world. So we've marked it at $395, including this 90 day devotional, which is a pretty thick book. And we just believe that that is a small investment, a still a significant investment, but it's an investment that will pay great dividends. Okay. It's an investment that if you make it, we just believe it's going to help your marriage get better. If you want more information about the 90 day online marriage boot camp. Check the link below. We would love to have you. And as you're going through that journey, make sure you continue to reach out to us. We're going to have a whole team of people that's going to be praying for you, rooting you on, and we believe that your relationship Amen. is going to get better. Absolutely. Sweetheart, anything else about that? I am so excited about this marriage boot, marriage boot camp. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to make a difference in a lot of marriages. I know that it will. Mm -hmm. Hey, we love you guys. We're excited about everything that God is doing in your life. If you're new to our program, hit the subscribe button. Um, turn on your notifications right now, the alarm, so that you can be the first to get our podcast every time it's released. For those of you all on YouTube, everybody else, it comes out every Thursday at 3 p.m. You know, one of the greatest compliments that you could give us would just be to share this podcast with somebody else that's needed. We believe that sharing is caring and caring is also sharing. And so we're pumped about next week. We got a good one for you. So we hope we'll see you then. God bless you and peace. peace.